what makes a good car? Good styling, a nice interior, a long spec sheet. I think this right here is a good car. And in this video, we'll get to the bottom of why that is. This is the Mazda CX-8. Is it worth your money? Let's find out. So here in the Philippines, in China, and the rest of Southeast Asia, the CX-8 is a step below the flagship CX-9. But in Japan, this is actually the flagship model because the CX-9 is not sold there. And also, this is not sold in the US. So US viewers, eat your hearts out. The CX-8 slots in between the CX-5 and the top of the line CX-9. This is a bit smaller than the CX-9. It is 170 millimeters shorter than the CX-9 and 130 millimeters narrower. I think Mazda's Kodo design is one of the most beautiful design languages in the car industry. Kodo directly translates to heartbeat. The focus of the designers is less on numbers and more on evoking emotions. And I think it definitely works. It's a very fluid design. You don't see individual shapes so much. It looks like it's one continuous shape. Everything just blends with each other. It looks like it's made of some sort of fluid. Um, lighting is an essential part of the design and the way the light reflects off the panels and the way the shadows um, accentuate the contours of the car create a dramatic effect that changes depending on the time of day. For most people, the CX-8 and the CX-9 are difficult to tell apart. But aside from the size, there are a couple of visual differences. I think the front of the CX-8 looks a bit sharper. You get these squintier looking headlamps and they're also relatively longer. By the way, these are adaptive LED headlamps. They're stereo sensitive and they also have automatic high beam. We also have this gap right here, which gives the hood a razor sharp look. On the CX-9, this gap right here is filled with a grill. Down here, you get these tiny LED fog lamps. The CX-8 has 19 inch wheels wrapped in 225-55 Toyo tires. Um, of course, you get disc brakes on all four corners. This gets fully independent suspension on all four corners. It gets a McPherson strut set up at the front and a multi-dig set up at the back. The Mazda CX-8 has G-vectoring control. So basically what it does is, as you're about to enter a turn, the car very subtly reduces torque by retarding the spark timing. It happens under 50 milliseconds after turning the wheel. So the car decelerates very slightly, just under the threshold of human perception. That deceleration puts more load on the front tires, thereby increasing grip, and thereby increasing turn-in performance. I've noticed that it's very difficult to get the car to oversteer. Even when turning the wheel quickly on a slick surface, the front tires barely squeal. Um, how much of that is due to G vectoring, and how much of that is due to the four-wheel drive system, I don't know. But I've driven 4x4 pickups on the same surface, and they still oversteered ever so slightly. The CX-8 has no aspirations of looking macho or rugged. This is a very classy looking crossover. Like most crossovers, you still get these flat black um, fender moldings. You get functional roof rails. So at the back, the CX-8 gets a very minimalistic design. The tail lamps look conspicuously like the tail lamps of the CX-9. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they're the exact same tail lamps. Instead of a trendy light bar, you get this chrome accent over here. You get all-wheel drive badging because this is the all-wheel drive model. You get dual exhaust tips, plastic molding, parking sensors. Um, this comes to the power lift gate. So in here, with the third row seats up, you have 290 liters of cargo space, which is usable. I can fit my camera bag, which is pretty big. And I still have room for a couple of more bags. Um, if you need more space, you can fold the third row seats down. And with the third row seats down, you have 775 liters of cargo space. If you need even more space than that, you can also fold the second row seats. Yeah, so apparently you can't fold the second row seats flat. 
you can only move them forward like so. So that's as much space as you can get behind the second row seats. There are two variants for the CX-8 here in the Philippines. There are two main differences between those two variants. We'll talk about the other difference later. Uh, for now, let's talk about what's under the hood. This is a 2.5 liter, naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine. It produces 187 horsepower and 252 newton meters of torque. So the main difference is that the stop of the line model has an all-wheel drive system, while the other model is front-wheel drive only. Uh, one minor complaint, at this price, I would expect hood struts, but no, you still have to prop the hood up. I think the Mazda CX-8 has one of the best looking interiors in this, in this price bracket. Um, everything that you can see and touch is made of high quality materials. Like this over here is leather wrapped. This is soft touch plastic. This is leather wrapped right here. Um, you get a two-tone interior. You get this dark brown leather on the seats and also on the armrests and also on the door sidings. By the way, this is Snapple leather, which is a more expensive kind of leather. Both front seats are power adjustable. The driver's seat has adjustable lumbar support. It also has two person memory settings. The steering wheel is leather wrapped. It tilts and it telescopes. You also get plenty of buns over here. It's not as minimalistic as the Mazda 3's interior, but I wouldn't call it busy either. I like how the dashboard looks. Um, you don't have hard lines on it. It looks almost organic. You get these wood accents over here and also over here. That's real wood, by the way. And you also get these aluminum accents, which give more contrast to the interior. This wide center console over here emphasizes the car's width. You have this piano black accent over here. And as you can see, it has a couple of scratches already. So I like how everything is laid out. It's very ergonomic. I can operate the infotainment screen without having to look at it or without having to look at the controls. This screen is not touch sensitive. You operate everything using the, using this knob and also these buttons over here. And I like how everything is laid out. It feels very natural. So this knob over here is also a, it's also a joystick and it feels very premium. It has a satisfying click to it. And you have these five buttons around the knob, which directly correspond to your five fingers. Now, speaking of the infotainment screen, it's the only thing about the interior of the car that I don't like so much. The screen is pretty small, and it's also a floating infotainment screen, so it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. It does have Apple CarPlay, it does have Android Auto, and it also has a 360 camera with active guidelines. Let's see. In terms of storage, you have, you have two sizable cup holders over here, um, and they have these spring-loaded tabs so you can fit smaller cups without them jiggling around. The glove box is dampened, it's of a decent size, and this is lined right here with some sort of felt material. The armrest is split at the middle, so I can fit my camera here. You also have two USB ports and one SD card slot. You get two climate zones here at the front. You get a 10 speaker Bose sound system, which sounds very good. For you Titos out there, you'd be glad to know that it still comes with a DVD slot. You get an analog speedometer, an analog tachometer, which I don't mind at all. I think it looks very good. You also get a head-up display. I wish it came with a sunroof, but the rest of the interior looks so good that I can forgive its shortcomings. Okay, so one more difference between the base model and the stop of the line model is that the stop of the line model is a six-seater. So the second row seats are captain seats. This right here is a permanent armrest. You can't raise this up. Over here you have this storage compartment, which is quite deep. You also have two USB ports. You have two sizable cup holders over here. And you also have heated seats, which you can activate using these buttons over here. Over there you have another climate zone. Um, you can adjust the fan speed. Uh, you can turn it off. And you also have two air vents. In terms of headroom, I have no complaints. I'm five foot eight. Uh, that's about four inches of headroom. Of course, the seat can be reclined, so I can lounge like this in absolute comfort. Legroom is also quite good. The front seat is adjusted to my height. If you want more privacy, you have these privacy shades over here. And now you can sit here like a VIP in absolute comfort and absolute privacy.
Okay, so access to the third row is quite easy because you have a low, low flooring and you can move the second row seat forward. Yeah, surprisingly it's not so bad. Um, so my headroom is a bit compromised. Um, leg room is quite plentiful. You have two cup holders over here, another two over here, but you don't get any USB ports or 12 volt outlets. And you also don't get any air vents here. So this has a lot of driver assist features. It has adaptive cruise control. Let's turn that, let's turn that on right now. Okay. You can't. <laughs> so the thing about the adaptive cruise of the CX-8 is that you can only activate it above 30 kbh. So it's practically useless in stop and go traffic like this. There we go. So right now we have adaptive cruise turned on. It's set to 40 kbh. And there's a car in front of me. It's gonna slow down, slow down, slow down, and now it's deactivated. <laughs> if it goes below 30 kbh, it deactivates. Yeah, so not as useful as the adaptive cruise control of the Subaru Forester in city traffic. But on the highway, it should be perfectly fine. This also has lane keep assist. It has blind spot warning. It has rear cross traffic alert. It's a very high tech crossover. Jinbai Itai. That's Mazda's philosophy when it comes to their cars. It means horse and rider as one. Now Mazdas tend to feel a bit more tactile than uh, most of their Japanese competitors. You get a better connection with the road and you get a better connection Red with the car. Camera. So unlike a lot of Mazda's other models, the CX-8 is tuned more for comfort than for handling. As you can see, the steering ratio is quite slow and you do get plenty of body roll. In terms of comfort though, I have absolutely no complaints. Um, the suspension feels very compliant. You don't feel the road imperfection so much, even with 19 inch wheels. It's also very quiet inside the cabin. You also don't feel a lot of vibrations. And everything feels very solid, nothing really creaks. Yeah, it's a very refined driving experience. Now, where do I see Jinbai Itai in this car? I see it in the interface. Like I said before, I don't even have to look at the controls to operate the infotainment screen. And I don't even have to look at the infotainment screen. It's all very intuitive. It all feels very natural. It blurs the interface between the driver and the, and the machine. Um, I see it in the steering. Although it's not the quickest out there, um, you do get plenty of feedback. And it's no slouch either. The CX-8's 2.5 liter engine is quite peppy. 0 to 100 time is officially at 9.17 seconds, which is about as quick or slightly quicker than most modern PPVs. Unlike most diesel PPVs though, you get more torque as you explore the upper range of the tachometer. So it's pretty fun to rev out the engine. The 6-speed transmission shifts relatively fast. Although a set of paddle shifters would definitely have been appreciated. The gear ratios are relatively short and downshifting is quite a bit of fun. Overall, the CX-8 excels at being a very comfortable and very refined cruiser. It may not feel as nimble as Mazda's other models, but compared to what you can buy at the price, like PPVs, it is quite a bit of fun to drive. Power is more than sufficient for overtaking and also for putting a smile to your face from time to time. The CX-8 may be a premium crossover, but in terms of pricing, it competes more with PPVs or pickup platform vehicles. Compared to the Toyota Fortuner, the most popular PPV, the CX-8 feels a lot more refined in almost every way. Thanks to its gasoline engine, it's a lot more quiet and it vibrates a lot less. 
In terms of ride quality, they're on opposite sides of the spectrum. The CX-8 is on the most comfortable end of the spectrum, while the Fortuner is on the harshest side of the spectrum. The interior of the CX-8 is also a lot better. But diesel used to be desirable here in the Philippines because it was a lot less expensive than petrol, but that no longer is the case. So the fact that the Fortuner has a diesel engine is not such an advantage anymore. The CX-8 sells for 2.45 million pesos, which is almost the same price as the Toyota Fortuner LTD. And curiously, it's also almost the same price as the base model CX-9. Now, if you value comfort, refinement, and luxury over ruggedness, this would be a better choice than the Toyota Fortuner LTD. And obviously, if you need an all-wheel drive car, this is a better choice than the base model CX-9 because that's only front-wheel drive. Now, 2.45 million pesos may seem expensive, but compared to other premium 7-seater luxury crossovers, it's actually pretty well priced. It's almost a million pesos cheaper than the Subaru Voltis. It's a lot less expensive than the Ford Explorer and the Hyundai Palisade. Um, this also comes with 5 years of free PMS, which makes the price even more enticing. Okay, so what makes a good car? You'll get different answers depending on who you ask. For some, it's something that looks nice. For some, it's something that has a nice interior. For some, it's something that's practical. I think it can be any of the above. But it also has to have a clear intent of what it wants to be. And it has to succeed at that intent. For example, a sports car doesn't have to have a nice interior or a long spec sheet, as long as it excels at being a sports car. An off-road vehicle doesn't have to have the most plush interior as long as it excels at being an off-road vehicle. The CX-8 isn't a jack-of-all-trades, but you can see and feel clarity of intent. It exceeds at making you feel like you're in a premium vehicle. The design is purposeful. Everything feels like it was designed to be there and not just placed there for economical reasons. Mazda is one of the few Japanese brands where designers and engineers have rule over the accountants. You'll see that in most modern Mazdas, and you'll see that in the Mazda CX-8. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.